I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer, really specializing in planning. How do you want to walk through this reset that's already begun? Because everybody else has a plan, you need to have one too. But we're going to do a special session with uh, consultants, clients, questions. And I'm going to start with Fern. And his client, Rob, says, I follow Anna Von Reitz on Facebook. She is a lawyer and brilliant. She's saying most of the banks, and she's listed which ones, are going to go away. She said to get out of banks and the stock market. I can't pull all my money. Oh, I can't put all my money in gold and silver. Lincoln did this during the Civil War. I expect things to get really ugly. Lynette, what now? I'm retired now, so I can't worry about the future. It's more about what I should do now. Well, okay. First of all, Anna Von Rietz does sound quite brilliant, and I have to say that I agree with her 100%. It's the choice that I made for me. And what you're talking about, particularly if you are indeed retired, and therefore your income has shifted, and you're probably also generating income from some of your investments. And what you're really doing is risking your principal and not getting paid for the risk. The central banks use financial repression by pushing those interest rates down all the way low. And all they say is, well, if we keep doing this, this is going to do this or it's going to. It's doing it. It's doing it. So I'm really, really sorry, Rob. I'm really, really sorry. Personally, I'm all in. That is clearly not suitable for you because I'm not retired yet. You are. But if you talk to Fernando, we have part of the strategy that addresses your income need. I'm fearful that you are risking your principal. And if you risk and lose your principal, how do you recoup it? And what are you getting paid on that principal anyway? Zero, one percent? Is one percent a year? worth risking 99% of your principal. So I think you should talk to Fern and look at the strategy because there is a way to maintain your income as we are going through the reset, which has already begun. And, you know, you do whatever you're comfortable with. It's your wealth. It's your money. It's your life. But I don't think it's worth risking all of your principal. Because you're here today, but you're also going to be here tomorrow. We aren't talking 50 years. We're talking a few years. My bet is 2023 is when the Federal Reserve anticipates having the digital dollar ready for distribution. So if they have the ability to do so, then they probably want to kind of hold things together, make it vulnerable, whatever until they need a really big crash to justify the rollout of the digital currency. And any wealth that you hold in the system, it's transferring away from you. I'm sorry. I wish it was, I really do wish it was different, but it isn't. So we got to deal with what the cards that we have in front of us right now. I suggest that any wealth that you do choose to keep in there, you are risking your principal. You need to be offsetting it with gold so that at least if you lose that, the gold will rise and give you back principal to work with. But you've got to maintain your principal or, you know, you have to maintain your principal and that principal has to maintain its purchasing power. You cannot do that with fiat currency. Central banks want more inflation, which means they are telling you that the currency, the purchasing power is too high and they're going to pull it down. Just saying. <clears throat> okay. Uh, from Sari's, one of Sari's clients, SL, says, I have a lot of money in a, oh, in a money market account. I would like to get back into the stock market, but I know that now is not the time to do so. I want to have liquidity to move quickly. 
thoughts or suggestions on amount I should hold in cash or put into precious metals. What will happen to the money if the reset occurs while my funds are in the money market account? So let me answer that second question first. What will happen to the money if the reset occurs while the funds are in the money market account? That will reset as well, presuming you even have access to it. Because like they changed the rules in 2008, what they discovered in September of 2019 was that there could still be a run on the money market, which is why, you know, you had the central banks just flood the money markets, the banks, the hedge funds with liquidity, with new money to prevent you even knowing that there was a problem. But subsequently, they have already started to talk about making the rules to get your wealth out of money markets even harder. Now, I don't know what those new rules are. In 2008, when they did that money market reform, it was putting in fees and gates large enough to make you go, oh, oh no, I, I'm not, I don't want to lose that money. But during a reset, the currency resets. That's all you can hold in a money market is fiat money. So thoughts and suggestions on amount I should hold in cash or put into precious metals. Well, depending upon what your circumstances are will vary. So for example, I just did that question with somebody that's retired. He's going to want more cash outside of the system to get through because he has need of income. If you're still working, you won't need as much cash. But either way, the cash is your first line of defense. And it's based upon your current cost of living. The, the whole strategy is based upon your goals, your current cost of living, what you have to work with, what your circumstances are. So it's different for every person. And I suggest that you have a conversation with Sari because the formulas are all built into the spreadsheets to determine. And if the number that she comes back to you with, if you feel like it's too high or too low, then you modify it. But that would be my recommendation. And um, you definitely need to have cash. And the rest, I mean, honestly... I want something that's completely outside of the system and private that runs no counterparty risk. I'm an ex-stockbroker. I have a very high level of comfort with stocks. I know how to read the charts and the graphs and the data and the filings and all that stuff. I don't own any, nor will I be buying any at this juncture. After the reset, after the dust settles, we see who's even going to survive. I mean, you've got a tremendous amount of zombie companies out there. These are old, well-known, a lot of them, old, well-known names that you would think, yeah, that, that's a solid company. And yet their earnings don't even cover the interest on the debt that they have, let alone any of the debt. And while you and I could not do that, we could not survive long on that because the banks don't want you to know about all the bad debt that they have on their books because after all, that impacts them and, and their market valuations as well. They just keep giving them more debt to pay the interest and whatever principal might be you do on the old debt. That's not going to end well. Why would you want to risk your wealth? I know that it's boring. I know that you've been waiting. Well, it's not so boring these days. But basically, I know you've been waiting for a long time. But I, patience is a virtue. And we're not done yet. So you've got to do what you're comfortable with. I have a certain level of cash outside of the system. That's my first line of defense. I have a certain amount of cash that is in the system to pay my bills and make sure that I can meet payroll and all of that because I have a business to run. But the rest of it is in precious metals. You know, the three legs of the dynastic wealth stool. Well, this is, this is really how my wealth is positioned 
um, in general, but but by a very wide margin, most of my wealth is definitely held in precious metals. But the three stools of the dynastic wealth or the three legs of the dynastic wealth stool, real estate, rare collectibles, and gold. So which is undervalued, right? You got to have a place to live. And you guys know, because I've told you, you know, I'm still in the process, though I think I'm getting close to conclusion finally, on a bug out house. Do I know I'm paying at the top of the market? Mm -hmm. But I have the gold to offset that. So I'm not taking that risk because of that. But everything else is in gold and silver, mostly gold, because for me, silver is barterable. And there's lots of different forms, which you're now seeing because I have this little thing of my, you know, junk silver that I pick up. These are my silver, sterling silver chopsticks that I talk about. You know, you buy it at a yard sale, you buy it at a secondhand store. It has to be uh, marked. But, you know, they're not really pretty and they're kind of bent, like somebody might have used it to dig stuff out and they're tarnished. Doesn't matter. They're monetary at their base. Doesn't matter. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. I ended up, this is also from Sari, and it's from J.A. I ended up losing my rental property in 2008 when the real estate market crashed. Overnight, it seemed my loan was called by the bank due and payable. And even though I never missed a payment, they would not work with me to allow me to keep my rental. How do I protect myself when this happens again? Well, you can tell I don't pre-read these questions. So what you need to do is have the gold to offset it. Because had you had enough gold during that crisis and even though you saw the spot market go down, that's actually when the collectibles made their this trend high. Then you can convert that gold into the fiat money and pay that mortgage off, just like I was talking about. Because right now, real estate is up here. It's severely overvalued. And gold is right down here. It's Well, I'm going to raise my hand so you can see it. Uh, it's severely undervalued. During this next crisis, that's going to flip-flop in a rather large way, particularly since that is how the government or the central banks do a reset. They revalue the fiat that has no intrinsic value against gold money that's all intrinsic value. You capture some of that, and then you, boom, pay that mortgage off. That's how you do it. And uh, also from Sari, JM asks, my grandfather, old school, keeps a lot of cash out of the bank. He is looking to purchase gold and silver and wants to put the cash back into the bank to do so. We are talking a lot of cash, seven figures. He has been doing this for a very long time. I am concerned about the reporting issues, lack of privacy, questions that may be asked. I am also concerned that we will not be able to wire out the funds, that there might be a hold on the funds. What can we do to protect his money? What should, be we, what should we be aware of? I appreciate your thoughts on this. Okay, so there's a lot in here, and let's just break this down. First of all, you know, your grandfather kind of sounds in many ways like he does not trust the system with very good reason. I don't know his age, but, you know, he's probably as old as I am or older because I don't know your age either. And we've lived a lot and seen a lot. <clears throat> so I agree with him. However, all of, those, all of that cash, however long he's been holding it, the central banks, have been destroying its real value, its purchasing power value through inflation. So it is time to protect it so that it doesn't lose the rest. Having said that, you have to understand that if the government and if the central banks can get you to volunteer how you move forward, then you think of it as your idea instead of theirs. They like distance between their policy and how it touches you. And so 
uh, you know, we're talking, all right, he's been doing this. I'm concerned about the reporting issues, lack of privacy and questions that may be asked. Okay. Now, look, I don't know how your grandfather gathered that cash, but if, if, if he did it through the bank, like just taking withdrawals, which is what I do, you know, the money's in the bank, I pull it out, right? You have a paper trail. It is not at this point illegal to hold cash or to deposit cash. It is not illegal. The, presumably, they're looking for illegal activities like drug dealing and what have you, where there is no paper trail on how you got that cash. So number one, I would say you probably want to do this sooner than later, but I would make an appointment with maybe say two banks, you know, a big bank and a small community bank, or maybe a, maybe a, a credit union, or so maybe three. And I'd sit down and I'd have a conversation with the branch manager and tell them, I mean, you don't have to give them the whole story, but I would tell them that you have a position in cash that was, you know, that you have a paper trail on that you want to deposit and you want to turn around and you want to, you want to buy precious metals with it, or you don't even tell them why, but you want to wire those funds out. And how will that work for them? Now, if they have to fill out a SARS, that's the report. I recently saw Jamie Dimon talking in front of the Senate Banking Committee. And when they were talking about these reports that people are so fearful about. And, you know, yep, when somebody comes in and deposits a large amount of money, if they're new to that bank and they don't know your customer, because that's the rule, you have to know your customer, uh, then they are going to fill out that SARS report. But when asked if the government or, or the banking committee had ever asked to see those reports, how many times they'd asked to see them, his answer was zero. So by putting that rumor out there, it makes people police themselves and it makes them fearful. And, then, and so you're volunteering that. But it is not illegal to have cash. It is not illegal to hold, to deposit cash or to withdraw cash. It's not illegal. And they don't need to know what you're going to do with that money. It's, well, once you deposit it, it's really their money. But presumably, or until you deposit it anyway, it's your money. So I would go to the bank where he's been doing business for probably a million years because bank customers are sticky. In other words, they don't change banks frequently. Um, and tell them that you want to make a deposit because it's probably where he pulled the funds from. You want to make a deposit and then you want to immediately turn around and transfer that out. If you're depositing cash, there should be zero hold on it. But again, you know, since 2008, they've really narrowed the scope of what the individuals can do, regardless of what they're telling you. So let's see, did I hit that? Lack of privacy, questions that may be asked, and I'm also concerned, oh, the wire out the funds, there might be holds, there shouldn't be, but, you know, go in and do your due diligence. I would go to the bank where he's done business forever, and, you know, if that's a large bank, that's fine. I would go to a community bank and then I would also go to a credit union and see who's willing to work with you on this. Um, there you go. Okay. So that's it for today. Um, now we've been having some challenges with YouTube since they did an update. So to turn on the bell notifications, just go to that bell below and click on it. Now, some of you may have done it because I've even gotten some feedback. Well, they've done that and it still isn't working. We're trying to figure it out, uh, but just check our social medias. Can we let, do we let them know on social media? Okay, so um, where, where do we post that? Twitter, Twitter Facebook, Facebook. LinkedIn. So before we go live, we're, we're doing it there as well. Okay. So that's another option for you guys. 
that feel like you're not getting the notifications even though you've clicked on that bell. So, you know, let's see if that doesn't work. Now, this this week I was part of the gold the virtual gold conference with Carrie and it was so much fun. We really had such a good time. The time went it just flew right by and it airs on Wednesday, February 3rd at 8, 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So if you look below, you can get your tickets in advance uh, and in, in the link is in the description. And I also had a conversation with my good friend Dustin Nemos on Nemos News Network. And we talked a lot about silver. So I think you'll get a lot out of that one as well. Now, next week, I'm going to be with an old friend, David Modell, and I haven't talked to him in a long time, but, you know, he was one of the very first channels I was ever on. And he's on his BABY Investment Counseling and Research. So it'll be good to see him, and I'm looking forward to it. He, he always asks great questions. I think it's going to be fabulous. If you... You know, if you want to meet with one of our consultants, just click that Calendly link below to set a time. If the time you want is not available, you can call us at 877-410-1414. But if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you share, share, share. If you haven't subscribed, do it. We come on lots every week. So we are here to be of service. But without any doubt, no doubt in my mind, it is time to have a plan and cover your assets. Here at ITM, we use the Wealth Shield, which is everything that you need to know to get you through a reset and thrive. What a concept. But keep in mind, shields are made of metal, not paper or promises. Those do not protect you. And until next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.